Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Today is, of course, Spy Wednesday, the day Judas sneaked off to make his pact with the Jewish leaders to hand our blessed Lord over in exchange for 30 pieces of silver. His betrayal has echoed down the centuries, carried on to a remarkable degree today by various bishops and clergy. While we must recognize and admit that we all betray our Lord each time we sin, there is a unique quality to selling him out based on unbelief, a rejection of him. When followers of our Lord who do believe in him sin, we fall from weakness, temporarily blinded by our desire for whatever sinful thought, word, or deed comes into our orbit. But when measure of sin is taken which is grounded in total rejection of Christ, refusing to believe who he is, this sin reveals itself to be not just of a higher magnitude, but of a different kind. Recall that Judas's betrayal began more than a year earlier at Capernaum, when our blessed Lord announced to the masses that he was the bread of life, and the physical eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood was necessary for salvation. It was that single announcement, the preaching of that great Eucharistic truth to the masses, that lost our blessed Lord, the masses. The truth of the Eucharist, of the Blessed Sacrament, is so deep, so stunning in its revelation of God's love for man, that most refuse to accept it. The reality of the real presence is both simple and at the same instant beyond comprehension, that it's a stumbling block for many. But it is the truth. It was guaranteed to us from the mouth of our Savior himself. Like so many self-professed followers of Christ today believe, this is a bridge too far, that the Almighty would freely choose to hide himself under the appearance of mere bread so that we could physically consume him and become more like him is inconceivable to more than half of those who are today baptized into non-Catholic congregations. As St. John, who was an eyewitness to our Lord's announcement at Capernaum notes in his gospel, those present said, this is too hard to believe, and they got up and they no longer walked with him. This is a lens through which Protestantism can be viewed or understood, a system of beliefs which places limits on the love of God. The truth destroyed whatever little faith the followers at Capernaum might have possessed because their faith was not authentic. It was a self-serving faith, a point our Lord accuses them of right at the start of this scriptural account. Yet this is also the case for many Catholics, obvious by their lack of reception of his sacred body and blood. And yet even more devastating that a mass rejection of the depth of our Lord's love for us among the sheep is the rejection of it among the shepherds. Judas was an apostle, a prototype of unfaithful shepherds down through history. And his model of treachery is repeated over and over again. First comes a lack of or a tossing aside of supernatural faith, then the betrayal for mere natural gain. At the root of all this is a rejection of the Eucharistic Christ, same as Judas. And the type of betrayal does need to be distinguished because one is much more difficult to come back from. Peter betrayed our Lord through weakness of faith. Judas betrayed our Lord through malice of faith. One produces tears and sorrow in the soul, the other produces despair. As God the Father revealed to St. Catherine of Siena, it was not the betrayal of his divine son which damned Judas, but his refusal to accept, to believe that even this could be forgiven. Judas was preconditioned not to be able to accept the mercy of God because he could not accept the reality of God's love made manifest in the Eucharist. It is fitting that his betrayal began with the announcement of the real presence and was concluded a year later in the upper room with the manifestation of the real presence. The fall from grace for a priest and even more so a bishop is something too distressing to contemplate for too long. Yet we see it all around us. The sexual scandals, the financial scandals, the theological scandals, the cowardice and the clear enunciation of the truth of Christ. And it is all of a Eucharistic nature. The refusal to enforce Canon 915 forbidding sacrilegious Holy Communions, the insanity of proposing Holy Communion for those in mortal sin, and so forth. 
It's as though leaders in the church have descended into a perpetual spy Wednesday where they're always in consort with the world, looking for a way to hand him over. Beware of these Judas priests and bishops, for they are legion. Pray and beware. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Hello, Militant. If you were silently nodding your head to today's Vortex episode, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to check out our website at churchmilitant.com. We keep up to date with all the latest in the Catholic world and also have loads of one-of-a-kind Catholic videos covering everything from church history to apologetics. Countless people have told us how much our work has helped them to become more faithful Catholics. So please follow our social media channels as well. The links are right below. Hope to see you tomorrow for The Vortex and much more. Thanks and may God bless you.